Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. This was my friends at yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today, we're going to do the corner to corner ombre throw. Now, I did get a request on this, and my main focus in today's video is the border of this. So this is regular C to C work. I'll talk about that as we go. And then I'm going to focus on this unique border. So I have somebody that's actually got their Afghan done, but they just wanted to help on the border. So that's what today's video is. In the video description, you're going to find, or the video information, wherever you want to call it, you're going to find a link for the right hand and left hand of making corner to corner. And you want to do this as a rectangle because that's what it's suggesting. But if you want to do a square, it'll still work as well. The size of the rectangle when you go to do this is that you're going to build it out until it's 50 boxes or clusters it calls in this pattern. So you'll do it at 50, bo 50 boxes, okay, so across. And then once you're going to start decreasing, on the one side increasing on the other and you're going to build it up until you end up having 60 boxes on the one side and therefore then you're going to finish off the corner to corner i know that's not really square but that's kind of how it's going to look so you're going to have 50 by 60 high and you can create this a particular blanket so this blanket is using five balls a red heart super saver ombre with a j hook a six millimeter Today's focus is that I'm going to use a sample that I have been playing with. It's a different interior, but the exterior is the same as far as being able to demonstrate what the stitch work is going to be. So if you would like to begin your C to C, just see the video information to be able to do that. And then you can come back here and we'll do this amazing border that has this at the end. And so you'll see that there's four rows at the end and that's what's going to be happening today. To begin to do this border, you're going to need four stitch markers. I just use a leftover yarn and it says that it's going to want you to do that to help you identify the corners and therefore it's one less step to be able to go wrong. So let's grab our sample no matter which one that you're going to work on and we are going to begin and so you'll have your raw edges that will look like this and then you can pick any corner to be able to begin to do this. So it says to join any yarn to the base of a chain three of a corner. So if you look at it right here, this is the stitch facing upwards. So it says to do the base. So I'm just going to go to the base to the outside. So let's just put this on. It's gonna be very obvious on what your first corner is gonna be. So you can put a stitch marker there later and just attach. And then it says from this point, just chain three. So one, two, and three and slip stitch in between the next cluster in the pattern it's called a cluster I would call it boxes but you can see when you pull it apart you can see the boxes and so you're just going to slip stitch and then chain three so one two three come in separate the boxes out and slip stitch so you're going to do this all the way across I'll see you at the first turn where I'm going to go all the way around on this thing and I'll be right back in a moment when you get to the corner you're going to chain three to get there and you're going to slip stitch right into the corner okay and then you're just going to turn so that's where they're suggesting that you put in your stitch marker so you'll be able to identify this corner later i don't know how hard it would be to identify that but you know what i am not going to play games today <laughs> not in the mood so we're going to continue along so you're just going to chain three and continue to follow the border around Okay, so please do this all the way around, put in your stitch markers where it's appropriate, and I'll be right back in a moment, and this will conclude round number one. When you get back around, you're looking for the final box, okay, which is right here, and it's suggesting that you do a chain two, and then a half double crochet to the beginning here. This is where you did it. So you're just going to do a half double crochet there. And I assume that they're asking us to do this so they don't want us to end up in the really in the, the very corner. They want us to be a little offset. So that's my assumption. So if you want to do that, that's good. And let's move on to round number two. Okay, round number two. We're starting just before the turn of the corner. So the corners are different versus what's in the middle. So just be paying attention to that. So you're going to chain one and you're going to single crochet into the same space. And this is prior to the corner. So to get around the corner, it's saying to chain four. So one, two, three, and four, and single crochet into the one after the turn. Now this is what's different. So the rest of them going across, it's telling us to chain three. So one, two, three, and then single crochet into the next space, okay? And then 
one, two, three, single crochet in the next space, and you're gonna do that until you get to the corner. So you'll be able to whip along this pretty quickly, I think, so far. With the instructions, I just go uh, round by round and I, I try not to look in ahead so I don't get overwhelmed. So I'm coming into the space before the turn and I need to get around the corner. So I'm gonna chain four, so one, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna come to the space after the turn, single crochet in, and then start chaining three and then single into the next. So just keep in mind, it's chain four to go around the corner and it's chain three on the regular sides. Please do this around. This is round number two. So I'm coming around on round number two. I'm going to single crochet the one before I started. So in the, in the space before I started. And when you do the final one to come here to where you started, you are going to chain two and then do a half double crochet to the first single crochet like that. And again, that will position you so that you're in the middle of another space. Okay, so this remains to be my corner. So what I'm going to do for myself and maybe recommend for you is that if you can't see the corner for next time, just move your stitch markers up. It might be more obvious on the other rounds, but I'm just doing that as a precaution and then moving on to round number three next. So round number three, you're in the space prior to a corner. That's important because the corners are still gonna be handled differently. So to start, you're going to chain one and single crochet into the space. And to get to the corner, you need to chain three. So one, two, three, and you're going to single crochet then into the space. Okay, that's your corner. But you're not finished with this corner. It's asking you to chain four, so one, two, three, four, and single crochet again into that same corner space. And you're gonna do that when you hit the corners and I'll cover this again. So now to move along the sides is all gonna be the same as what you already know. So you're just gonna chain three and just work within the spaces that you have. So single crochet there, so chain three, jump. This is not what I expected the border to be, by the way. I didn't think the border was this open. It doesn't look like it in the photographs. So just continuing along. Am I wrong? Like you can leave me a comment. This is not what I expected at all. Okay, so I'm moving along and I'm looking for where the corner is gonna happen. And I can kind of see, I can see why they've have us marking the stitches. It's right here. So to get to that corner, you've got to chain three first, single crochet in, but you're not done. You're gonna chain four and single crochet again into that same corner to make that corner really turn, and then chain three and jump. So do this all the way around for round number three, and I'll be right back. So I'm coming to the end of number three, so I'm going to uh, continue along. You got your final box there. This is where you started. So I'm going to only chain two and then do a half double crochet in the beginning single crochet to join it. Again, this leaves you in the partial of a space. And so the corner is way over here now, so you can see that we're shifting more and more around. And let's begin the final round, number four. Okay, the fourth and final round is already what you know. This border is so much more simpler than I expected, but that's okay. Who, who cares, right? So let's continue. The corner is not to get right here. So it is those chain four spaces that you have. If you wanna follow it out, you can do so. So right where you're sitting, you're gonna chain up one, and single crochet in. The sides are gonna be what you already know. Just chain three to go to the next space. The corner is the next one, so you need to chain three before you get there. And then go right into that chain four space, single crochet, and then chain four. So one, two, three, four, and then come into the same space. You're just gonna whip along the sides, so start chaining threes and single crocheting in each of the open spaces. So I kind of looked at the photograph. I guess you can kind of see it. I think it's because the ombre changes colors that it actually makes it look completely different than this. I'm not complaining, I'm just surprised. I thought the border was more um, solid. So I'm just continuing to go all the way along. I'm just looking for the corner space. I can see why they're suggesting the um, stitch markers, just in case you're not conscious of where the corners are. So I'm heading to the corner next. 
So single crochet in, chain four, and then coming back in to the same one, and then chain three and start whipping along the side. So please do this for round number four. This actually borders looking good. Hmm. Learn something every day. I'll be right back. So I'm coming to the end of number four. So you're just gonna chain three and then you're just gonna slip stitch to the first single crochet. So you're not doing the half double crochet like we have been because we're not adding anymore. But if you wanted to, you could just continue with the same motion of just keeping your, your um, chain fours in the corner. So then you can just fasten off, weave in your ends, and this would be a really cool idea. Um, I think this looks uh, pretty actually pretty good with the ombre that I see in the photograph. And so you can remove out all your stitch markers so you have a nice clean look. And of course you can always block it, which just means that you just dampen it uh, with some water and let it air dry. So just stretch it out, let it air dry flat, and therefore you'll have all of that. And that's really, really neat. So today is how you do this one.